Hello and welcome back to this series. In this video, we will talk about fonts. Now, what does this mean? Well, we will talk about font sizes, so specifically the M and REM units, what these are, how we can use them, and we will learn how we can import font families to our code, and by that, to our website. So let's start right now. So back on our website, and before we start, I would like to change one thing. Because if we increase the size right here, you can see that the image, the maximum width of the image, is limited right here. This is due to the max width property, this one right here, that we added in the last video when we talked about box sizing. Well, I actually only wanted to show you how max width works, but we don't need it on our website. Therefore, we should delete that now and save the code and go back and reload it. And with that, we can see that our image now again uses the entire width available right here. So this was one thing that I wanted to change. And there are two things that I would like to make clear before we start. Because as I said in the introduction, we will focus on to the font sizing with the M and REM units in this video. Of course, we have more units available, how we can change the font size on our websites. This can be absolute units like pixels or points, or also other scalable units like percentages. But as I said, we'll focus on to M and REM mainly in this video. And talking about M and REM, M and REM can not only be applied to the font size actually, you could also apply them to the padding for example. But in this video, we'll only focus on to the font sizing property. So now that we clarified that, let's think about the most important question. What is M and REM and especially why do we need it or why could we need it? Well, the thing is that the way we use our websites changed a lot in the last years. We have a lot of different devices. We have smartphones, we have laptops and we have large screens. So the key word nowadays is a responsive design. So basically we want to make sure that our website looks good on all devices. And this must of course be true for the general look of the website. We'll talk about media queries in the next video, also something that we need to make our site well responsive. But this is also important for the font size. Because imagine that you define a fixed font size which is equal on all devices then this might look good on big screens and might be really good readable. But on smaller devices, this might be really tiny and you can hardly read a thing. Therefore, we need to make sure that our text is readable on all devices. And M and REM are units, scalable units, which allow you to do that. Now, how does this work and do we have M and REM right here actually? And the answer is actually yes, because if we look at the website right here, you can see that the font size for actually most of the text we have is equal, but Mike's world up here is bigger than the other elements or than the text of the other elements. Now, what's the reason for that? Well, if we look right here and open it and click onto the H1 class, then we can see that our browser applies a font size of 2M to this H1 element. And with that, the browser simply specifies that the font size of this H1 element should be two times the font size of the parent element. Now this might be confusing right now. So let's have a look at the code and see how this works. Let's go to the index.html file and right here we have it. Here we have the H1 element, Mike's world. As we know, our browser applies a font size of 2M to this class, so two times the size of the parent element. The parent element of this h1 element is here, the header. Now, if this size is two times the size of the header, what's the size of the header actually? Let's have a look, let's go back and let's select it right here. And if we scroll up right here, we can see that no font size is defined for this header element. But I just said that the size of our child is two times the size of the header element and apparently we can calculate the size right here. So how does this work? Well, the answer is if we do not define a font size for this element right here or in general for the elements on our website, the default font size of the browser is applied. 
and the default font size of our browser with the default settings normally is 16 pixels. And because of that, as we know that this header right here doesn't have a font size applied, we use the default browser settings. So we know that this header has a size of 16 pixels. Well, and as our h1 element is two times the size of our header element, well, we know that our h1 element right here has 32 pixels. So that's the first thing you should keep in mind. Using M for the font size simply means that the font size of the element you apply M to depends on the font size of the parent element. And if you didn't specify a font size for this parent element or for the font size in general on your website, then the font size simply is defined by the browser and the default browser font size is 16 pixels. That's really important. Now let's dive a little bit deeper and let's see what else we can do right here because maybe we want to change the size of Mike's world here. To do that, let's go back to our code and to the CSS file. And let me add one thing right here to our HTML selector. And this is font size 100%. And don't worry, as I said in the beginning, we'll only work with M and Rem in this video. It's just nicer to add this font size 100% to the HTML element or to the HTML selector right here, because with that, it becomes immediately clear for anybody that we simply use the default size of the browser as the general font size for our HTML element and by that for our website. If we save that, you can of course see that this doesn't change a thing. Now back to our code and now let's change some things. So I'm again here in the header and we learned that the page title right here, so this is the class of the h1 element, we saw that this has a font size of 2m. We saw that this was interpreted like that by the browser and we should make sure that it's not our browser who interprets that, but that it's us who is defining this. So let's go back and let's reload the page. As you can see, nothing changed, but now we can see our font size 2M right here because now we defined it. So let's go back and let's now add the font size right there. You remember the fixed bar class, this is basically the class of the header element. This is the parent of page title right here. Now what happens if I add font size 2M also to this element? Let's see, let's save it and let's go back. Now we see that the size of Mike's world doubled. Why is this happening? Well, think about what I just said about M. I just said that the font size of an element that has the M unit applied depends on the font size of the parent element. And what we did now is we simply said that the page title should be two times, so 2M, the font size of the fixed bar class, so of the parent element. But this fixed bar also has a parent element, of course. And if we look at index.html right here, we can see that the fixed bar has the body as the parent element. Well, and the body has the HTML element as the parent element. And as we said, the font size of the HTML element to 100%. And as we also know that the default font size defined by the browser is 16 pixels. Well, what we can simply see right here is that we have 16 pixels for HTML in general. We have also 16 pixels for the body element, but now we have two times the size of the body element for our header element with the class fixed bar, so 32 pixels. Well, and for the h1 element right here with the class page title, we have two times the size of the parent, which is 32 pixels, and because of that, we now have 64 pixels for our h1 element right here. And it's really important to understand this behavior because this can be helpful if you want to make sure that the font size depends on a specific parent, then it's totally fine. But this can also lead to unsatisfying results like we have it right here, where we can see that Mike's world is, well, generally a little bit too big.
But there is another unit that we can use to easily change that because I said that we have M, which means that the font size depends on the font size of the parent. But there is also rem, and rem stands for root. And the root element is the HTML element. And maybe you can imagine what happens now if I change M to rem for our H1 element, so for the class page title right here. If I go to the style file right there, and now simply add to rem, as you can see it like that, and save that. Well, what do you think will happen? I just said that the size will now depend on the root element, so on the HTML element right here. Now, if you go back to our page and reload it, well, you can see that Mike's world now is the size that it had in the beginning. Now, why is this happening? Well, because the HTML element has a font size of 100%, so 16 pixels in our case, and the font size of the page title class right here now simply is two times the font size of the root element. This means if I change this to 1rem and this right here to 200%, we save that, go back and reload the page, then this doesn't have any effect onto Mike's world because now we double the size of the HTML element, the font size of the HTML element, but we reduce the font size of the h1 element by 50%, so we have the same thing right here. But for all the other elements, you can now see that the size doubled because, as I said before, we didn't define a font size for the remaining elements, and therefore the font size of these elements depends on the size defined for the HTML element. So let's go back to the code and change it back to 100% right here. And for our website, actually, I think it's fine to use rem because we don't need m right here. As I said, m can be really useful if you want to have some specific font sizing depending on the parent. But for our website, we can actually use the font size of one rem for our text, as I would say. So right here for the navigation items right there and also for our trip text and for the feedback and for the text down here. So if we save that and go back to our page, everything looks like that now. Maybe we should go back and increase the page title to 2rem. I think this looks better. This didn't look bad in the beginning, so let's reload that. Yes, I think this is fine. There is one more thing that we could add to make sure that our text is also displayed correctly on older browsers, which might not support M and RAM correctly. And this can simply be done by adding font size, let's say 16 pixels, right here before the actual RAM definition. As I said, this can be helpful for all the browsers where M and RAM cannot be displayed correctly. So we have it right here and right there and right there like that. So if we save that and reload the page, well, I still think it looks quite good actually. We don't have any big issues and I'm quite happy with the font size that we have. What we didn't talk about so far is, what is now the advantage of using rem in our case and not the pixels that we implemented as a fallback? Well, the answer is that by using the structure we have right here, we can simply change the font size of all the elements by simply changing the font size of our root element, so of the HTML element. And by adjusting the rem units of specific elements on our page, we will do that in a few seconds, we can make sure that the relation between the different elements on our website and the root element always is the same. Additionally, this structure also allows us to make sure that the page is displayed correctly if the user is not using the standard font size in the browser. Because if he uses a bigger font, for example, this will of course increase the font size displayed on the website or the way the fonts are displayed on our website. But it will again maintain the relation or the scale between the different elements and the root element, the HTML element. 
So that's why using a structure like that is a really big improvement when it comes to responsive web design. However, as I said, we want to see that in action or a practical example. And one example could be the way the home and contact elements are displayed right here. Because I think they are not correctly sized, so we should change that in our code. So let's go back to the code and increase that to 1.5 rem maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, looks better from a font size perspective. Maybe a little bit too big. Let's maybe make 1.5. 3 rem right here. Let's see. And this does look better from the font size perspective, but we should change that width maybe to, let's say, 20%. We talked about box sizing in the last video, so I'll not talk about the details regarding that right now. And if we save that and go back, we can see that the boxes look fine, but we have the problem that contact, well, is not displayed correctly. And that's simply due to the fact that we don't need that navigation A selector anymore right here. So let's save that. And by the way, that's the selector that was referring to that anchor tag in here. But as we defined the text decoration none and the color for this anchor tag right there, we can also get rid of that background color red, by the way. Well, if we save that and go back and reload the page, then this looks wrong. Oh, sorry, I forgot to delete the comma right here. So let's save it again and let's go back and let's reload the page. Yeah, and I think now it looks better. And that's actually the basic concept behind M and Rem. And before we finish this video, there is one more thing that I would like to show you. Because at the moment, we are using the default font family on our website. And although this look might be quite okay, I think we should choose another font family for that. And the great thing is that we can do that really easily by just Googling for Google Fonts right here. And if you now click onto that link, you can see a lot of different font families you can choose from. Now for our website, I choose a specific font. I choose Barlow, you can see it, you can search for the font families up here. And I'll simply use that standard style that we have right here. So this regular 400 style. And if you now click onto the plus right here, and then right here in the lower part of the screen, then you can actually exactly see how you can embed the font family to your website. The first thing is you need to copy that link right here. Let's go back to the code. And of course, add that link up here in the head element of our index HTML file right there. So that was step one. Now back to the page. And now we can see that we simply have to use the following CSS rules to specify the family. So we simply copy that part right here, go back and now go to our style file and add it up here, maybe on the second position in our HTML selector. Important, this is the font family that we applied, so Barlow. And this is the fallback, so in case Barlow cannot be loaded, or cannot be displayed. Now, if we save that and go back to our page right here and reload it, you can now see that we easily applied that new font family to our website. If you like it or not, that's your choice. The important thing is that after this video, you now know how to make your font size more responsive with M and Rem. And you also know how you can easily import font families from Google Fonts. And with that, the only thing I can say right now is thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you in the next video and bye.